Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is my interview with Zach Stevens, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, it. It got cut short a little bit because uh, somebody kept interrupting at the end of it, as you can see. I left a little bit of it in. I edited most of it out, though. But uh, another interviewer kept interrupting, and uh, so he had to get going. But um, we were supposed to set up another interview, and unfortunately it never happened. Maybe it'll happen sometime down the line. Who knows? I'll keep bugging him, I guess. I don't know. But uh, we did talk a lot about Sabotage and uh, his vocal lessons that he actually gives and Circle to Circle. And we did talk about his new band, uh, Arch and Angel. So check out the video. Hope you enjoy it. And maybe we'll have a part two sometime. All right. Check out Zach Stevens. Bye. It's time for Rat Salad Review with your hosts, Wayne Noon, Greg Norgal, and Nate Lander. All right, well, uh, welcome to the Rat Salad Review. Actually, um, you, well, you, I'm sure you don't remember me, but uh, I paid, played a show with you way back in the day. Uh, I had a band called Phoenix Rain, and it was me, okay. uh, you, um, uh, you were doing Machines of Grace at the time. Okay. And Cage and Ravage. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was a show in Brooklyn. I sure remember that. Absolutely cool, man. Good to see yeah. you again. Yeah, and that's where I got the Machines of Grace album. All right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's been a while since I've seen you. <laughs> I know. That is, that's that been a long time. That's since uh, 09. Yeah, yeah, that was that long ago, yeah. yeah my, my band's gone and done with now, so it's it's all over with. <laughs> oh, yes, we've all had that happen. No. Yes, yes, we did. But, uh, yeah, uh, so, yeah, that was a cool show. I, I remember that. I think I got a picture of you or something. But, uh, yeah, you signed the CD, and you were all very cool guys and everything. Do you still talk to uh, Jeff Plate? Obviously you do, because you just were on the uh, TSO uh, show um, uh, tour. Right. Yes. Yep, yep. We, you know, talk about that quite often. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just got off the tour uh, December 31, ended off in Toronto, so I've talked to him. I've texted back and forth with Jeff a couple of times uh, since then. Mm. I mean, the big thing that was uh, super sad was we lost the guitarist. Oh, really? Uh, Matt. Matt left and passed away um, probably about three or four weeks ago. Very recent. Um, oh, bat he, battled, he battled brain and lung cancer for probably eight or nine years. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. I think, actually, uh, I, think I remember a post about that. Something was going on with him. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's been, I mean, he decided he was going to take experimental treatments, um, you know, to help out the drug companies and mm -hmm. because they have to, you know, test the stuff. And, you know, it was a position where you might as well do it because, right. not, you know, he you might luck up and have something just be able to really turn things around. Mm -hmm. So he was very instrumental with a lot of drug companies in helping them research and test the new, the newest cancer drugs right and they worked for a while but he kept doing it and I, you know we were all like you know you might as well yeah. because they kept doing mris and things wouldn't really go away and you know but you know he did a lot for the research and everything but unfortunately just the battle was just he he fought it so bravely for almost a decade yeah upwards of that or maybe even more and then it just, you know, it started to metastasize yeah. again. So it would go lung, brain. It was just crazy, very rare. Wow. So yeah, that was really sad. To, you know, that happened basically right after we got off the road. So that was probably the last thing me and Jeff talked about. Oh, Unfortunately, wow. not, not a happy subject, but yeah, yeah, it's been kind of kind of tough. But yeah, that's the way. You know, we're getting older. You know, and but believe me, that was way too young. I mean, right. gee, he's. Right about, I think Jeff is a little older than me. I think Matt and I were exactly the same age. So you're talking about 53. That's mm -hmm. that's too early now. Yeah, way too early. Yep. And especially like, but look, Paul O'Neill at 61. Oh, that's yeah. way too yep. good. So yeah. we've had a couple. It hasn't. It's been a rough stretch, man. Yeah. Losing a couple of real influential people. 
Yeah, yeah you are. Yeah, it's that's sad. Well, I'm very sorry to hear about that. That's terrible. Thanks. Um, oh, and also too, um, that band, Machines of Grace, th- did that have like something to do with Wicked Witch? Because I, I, this uh, was released not too long ago. Wicked Witch uh, from yes. they call it from Boston. So that's was that right. kind of like intertwined with that? Oh yeah. yeah, Machines of Grace, the recorded album in '09 that you have was really mostly comprised of the early Wicked Witch song, so it's directly related. Oh. Yeah. It, it was a change of band name coming from Wicked Witch. So then Matt had that released. Um, you know, he said, hey, I want to do that. And we're like, absolutely. Mm. Go ahead and put stuff out. It's probably remastered, probably early recordings there yeah. of stuff that didn't get, that didn't get, you know, come over to the Machines of Grace album. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, directly related. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool yeah that's nice yeah it's a nice little uh album i'm sure that's not the original artwork but uh close right enough, right that's right <laughs> you know we have different people working on it i mean but yeah you know anything we can get out there and i thought that was cool yeah. you know that was really matt's last project oh really in which yeah oh, just wow. i you know you wonder you know you wanted to get that out there just you know to be able to get out what we had you know, everything that we had not released to that point, and now I get it, you yeah, know? Yeah. Well, I'm glad he got to do that, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what is going... I'm. And you know what? Just Let's get this out of the way now. What's going on with Sabotage? Is that completely done? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, me and you, right? No, I, do, I doubt it. I mean, I you can't say it's completely done. I mean, it's because we just don't know. Right. I mean... I've learned to say never say never right. in the music business. As soon as you would say never, somebody's going to hear that with influence and say, guess what? Just because you said that. So maybe we should just start saying this is absolutely done. Why not? <laughs> but, um, no, uh, I, w- I can't say that at all. And talking to the guys, even John, I mean, he's got all kind of songs written. Mm. He's just trying to get a green light. It's a business decision. You know, basically what happened when you've got TSO, this huge conglomerate, is basically the holding company of sabotage. And that's what it has become business wise. Mm. So I think it's just purely a business situation right now. You've got the people who are directly involved with John and the management of of TSO kind of holding. They really are literally holding sabotage. Now, mm. whether they're going to hold it and go, you can be free <laughs> and release and release the, you know, what used to be a baby and is now like it's almost like releasing the giant from under the tomb. Right. Um, it happened. So I can't sit there really and and say, no, that's you know, that's all history. That shut down when I know that we have the resources to spring that thing into action. Like at any, any minute we might, you know, get a call. So right, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just a matter of business. I think it's like when you look at TSO, the management is the management of sabotage. Mm. So they're probably looking at TSO being the monster that it is, you know, just the, you know, phenomenon number one tour billboard of last year, most shows, yeah. um, you can do 120 shows between two bands that that puts you 120 arena shows will put you at most arena shows right i mean they're right. People doing it smart now they're putting together tours running out for a little while doing it efficiently making uh smart profits getting taking a break going back out so right. they're not many you, you don't see you know kiss has been doing it for a long time at the end of the road right. tour um but they still do it in segments. Uh, so it was kind of interesting. It's not like the old, old days where, you know, bands would play something like 250 days a year. Yeah. Um, or Maiden in the early days doing, gosh, close to the entire year, if he could possibly still hold up vocally, which right. he's done an amazing, um, you know, job of. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, the touring thing has changed um, business-wise, but when you look at that and how successful it is, if they're going, hey, what can we do with this sabotage? What you know, we know it's mostly a European appeal. So if you're going to do big um, festival shows, 
like we did back with 2015 when we put TSO and Sabotage together at Bakken. Right, yeah. 20,000 people. Um, that was fantastic. So, and that's really where I feel most at home is in front of crowds like that. Yeah. And so that's what I would see the vision of it doing. So they just have to say, hey, it's okay that that is going to be European festivals. Let's go out there, you know, do it like that. Plan a nice, you know, stage, a nice production for that type of venue. Mm. And have the multimedia thing going with the screens, such as what we do in TSO, telling a story. There's lots of stories to be told. There's almost a rock theater character about putting a, a sabotage production out there now we look at it in a whole different way just based on what we do with TSO. So mm-hmm. that caused me, the guy in the band, and also of the Sabotage band, to say, wow, wouldn't it be neat to put that similar production, maybe not to that extent, but, but a similar production together where we have multimedia, we use the screens to help tell the stories of the songs, and maybe do it in a storytelling type of fashion. Not with a narrator, right. with like TSO, but... That's not necessary, but you could still play, you know, introductions to some songs, almost Maiden-like. Right, have yeah. Introduction to three or four specific featured numbers that have multiple vocals and, you know, that need extra vocalists, like with the counterpoint stuff like Wake of Magellan, mm-hmm. um, Not What You See, uh, Chance, um, you know, uh, Hourglass, some of the songs that have those massive tracks right. of vocals going, um that we became pretty um you know experts uh, i would say you know that we gained the ex- <laughs> recording that kind of stuff yeah it's being used as science right um, it's a lot of fun but we would need extra singers so i'm also seeing on those feature numbers bringing out some of the people who sing with us in tso i mean yeah. this is all like I sit around and think of this it's like I can't really think of like I really you know I don't know if it would happen or not sabotage but I still can't help but sit around and think about some of these things the way that I would imagine it uh, utilizing some of the tools that TSO has Um, there's a lot of stories and the albums are still conceptual for the most part Edge of Thorns is more non-conceptual plain rock record but almost everything after that has a lot of stories, and that was right. when Paul O'Neill was starting to get into writing the stories and having the stories, you know, align with the songs on the record and having that main kind of storyline weaving through songs. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much, just a oh god, it's just so many things that can that that you know more than I could even imagine that could be, you know, done um, yeah. Yeah, with I the thought, inspiration, right. Yeah, I thought when uh, when that whacking thing happened, I thought, oh man, they're going to be back, and you know, you know, things are going to yeah. happen. But then it just died, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, we were like, I think we all, you know, were thinking it was kind of the same thing. Um, but then, you know, what happened when and Paul passed away, and right. you know, that was shocking, and still everybody's kind of reeling from that and adjusting, mm. um, and having to adjust to running TSO by committee rather than having Paul. He he touched everything. I mean, he basically had the final decision in every single phase. He was one of those leaders and managers that basically he delegated, but when it really came down to it, it didn't matter how big or small the decision was, he was making it. Right. Yeah. Now, getting, now we're getting used to having it run by a, like a 10 person committee of, oh, wow. of his, his daughter, Ireland, who, who does a, a fantastic job for being so young, but she's like wildly intelligent. With yeah. multiple degrees, yeah, coming out of high school, like really, like accelerated, like oh, unbelievable. Wow. I mean, mind blowingly intelligent. Wow. One of the fast trackers, as I call it, you want know, fast track you by the time you get out of high school, you've got a college degree that tight. Yeah. So, not musical in, in background, but it doesn't matter. Very intelligent and business wise, that's what she's got. So, mm. he's one of the maybe 10 consisting of Night Castle Management and uh, the music directors. Um, Derek of the East and Al Petrelli, mm-hmm. uh, yep. sabotage guitarist, yep. uh, music direction of the West, and um, you know some talent coordination people. Um, so I think everybody's doing a good job. 
And I think that's one of the main reasons that we didn't get to dive straight into, you know, here's the reunion. Right. Yeah. Because the following year, boom, the the least expected happens. Yeah. With almost passing. So that was a huge, that's been the step back that we're going through. And I right. think that's, you know, what you're knowing that that is exactly what it is. Now the question is, will we be able to get beyond that and then let's get on with it? Right. Yeah. I think there is like a shelf life. Uh, it's probably not as short as I would say as a member of the band, we would say like, Oh man, a year or two from now, you can't do this. Mm. It's going to be the expiration date. It's right. like old milk. Oh no, my half and half expired two months ago. I'm not putting my coffee. You right. know, I don't want it to hit an expiration date and have the show and be like, no, this isn't doable because guess what? Our fan base is now 72 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's already not the youngest fan base. Right. Yeah. Talk yep. about a fan base consisting mostly of people my age. So I can yeah. tell you for sure. Yeah, pretty much. That that's where it's at. But I also know that we're still considered young as far as anything I've received from AARP or any of those publications. <laughs> They say, don't worry about it. You're still sort of you know, <laughs> out on tour. I beg to differ because I'm like, oh, man, I definitely don't feel like I did in my 20s. But right. um, but no, I you know, th that's basically where it's at. I mean, it's just oh, it's just so, like a business. Sabotage is in a unique position in in the business because we now find ourselves a subsidiary company, a small company of the conglomerate of TSO, right, which yeah. is so busy and and all the members play in TSO. Right. So it's like, it makes it more difficult to just go, hey, can't you just come back out with that and get that record out? Yeah, I would like that. But obviously not as easily, you know, done as said. But, hmm, but I'm still not going to, I'm still not going to stop dreaming of the production that I see right. and the potential that we can see with it. So I'm hoping for the best. Yeah, yeah, me too. Because uh, I mean, yeah. all all my friends, even the guys I went to high school with and everything, we we all loved Sabotage, and you know, just we would go on, you know, to shows and stuff and listen to Sabotage in a way, and just you know, what you guys did was was great back in the day. It was awesome. Yeah, and to not have you guys around anymore, it just sucks. I mean, you got your own bands, you have you know, Circle to Circle, yeah, and all the other Our stuff. Angel. Yeah, that's a very good one. Thanks, yes. and you know. We used a lot of inspiration of a lot of bands that we grew up with in making the Archangel album. You can definitely hear hints of sabotage, but yeah, we didn't yeah. say, hey, let's make a sabotage album. That's ridiculous. Right. It's already going to be compared to it because I'm singing on the album. You can't get past the comparison. It's just naturally going to be there. It's not even, I don't even call it a comparison anymore. It's a right. given. Right, yeah. Uh, as you as do I sing a little bit mouth. different, though. I know I'm listening to the album last couple of days. I do notice you do sing a little differently. Yeah, because I'm getting older. I mean, no. yeah, not too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're singing a little. You know, my yeah. style. Yeah, it's good. You know, you try different things. I just don't want to do the same old thing. You know, artists, we, we don't. That's what art is all about. Yeah. Um, changing, adapting, doing things different so you don't get bored. Because I'm right, telling right. you, if I get bored, then we got a problem because I'm not going to be interested in, you know, it's hard. Um, you know, when you get up there at this point in my career, it's almost 30 years after I started, mm. it's not getting any easier. Right. Yeah. Um, the toll and to upkeep the vocal instrument, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I, you have to be interested and excited to be able to say, I'm going to take off and go over there, you know, to Europe and do a string of, you know, shows where this vocal style doesn't get any easier it's, it's a tough vocal style to you know to, to just keep banging and banging and banging when right. you give it your all it's not like maybe like country where you can kind of hold back a little bit and play some softer stuff no this is all completely you're yeah, on 100 you percent you're on 11 and it doesn't let up so you have to look at the style and you have to be smart about how you approach that kind of stuff so i have to be a lot smarter now these days um in the way i approach the the whole you know, vocal thing, yeah. but you know, yeah, I'm changing a, some, it, it's still, the, you know, the same voice, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, Maybe you're, some, you're still there. I, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to change some because, 
you know, I got to stay interested, yeah. you know, and, 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 but I don't want to get bored because if I get bored and unhappy and uninterested, then that's going to be less shows and less activities in the music business because right. you have to have energy, you know, to remain in this business. It, it doesn't slow down. It's made for 20 year olds. Yeah. Yeah. Made for young people, but yet we dominate old, you know, people of older ages are now dominating certain genres. We right. dominate metal. We dominate hard rock. You know, God smacking all them solely or not. I'm telling you, he's our age. Mm. Who cares? He's done, right. you know, he's dominant. And yeah. that's the way it is. But you get better, too, with age. Um, and you have to accept two things as a singer. Like I teach vocal lessons now on Skype. Oh, to, yeah. And I got a handful of students for the past three years. And we work and, and try to move them along to, you know, their goals, to meet their goals in the music business and whatever it might be whatever vocal goals they have. And I say, look, I got the first thing I do is ask them two questions. If you're, I say, if you're okay with these two questions, if you say that's okay, then we can move forward. If you're not really okay with that, then, then we might want to think twice about you, you know, going into a vocal lifestyle. Cause that's what right. it is. Vocal lifestyle. Right. So number one, are you okay with the fact that, that vocals is a life learn, a lifelong learning process that you'll, that you have to continue, that you will continue learning and building in your tool, your tool, your tool belt as long as you're in, as long as you're singing and as long as you live uh, and as long as you, you know, care to sing. Now, you may stop singing and you're going to live, you know, more, but as long as you're singing, are you OK with the fact that you will that you're going to have to you're going to learn, keep on learning new things up right, until yeah. the time you decide to stop singing? Uh, and they go, OK. And then I say, number two, are you OK with knowing that you're never going to know everything? You're never going to know everything about vocals. Mm. You're only one body. You've got a set of vocal cords that's born with you. You can develop them. They might not be giant like your favorite baseball or hockey announcer. Mm. Everybody wants those giant vocal cords, you know, uh, yeah, go! Yeah, yep. you know, and all that. Where you feel like, geez, how come he can scream all the time and I can't and I feel sore? Well, you know, you only have one set. So you could, the good news is you can develop them. Mm. They can be developed. Even if you have a small set of vocal cords, I actually have a pretty small physiologically, a pretty small set of vocal cords. I've wow. been to Ian doctors before in years past, you know, just having vocal checkups or even with problems. And they go, man, that your vocal cords are quite small compared to those. I'm like, God, thanks a lot. No wonder. I'm like, <laughs> you know, maybe I would want a bigger pair of vocal cords myself. Yeah. Um, like, John, like John Oliva. I can tell he's got the most booming loud, one of the most booming loud voices that you'll ever hear in your life. So, yeah. but you can't just go to Kmart or, or Walmart and buy a new set of vocal cords and, and, and poke them in there. You know what I mean? You're going to, yeah. you got to. So if they can, if they can be okay with those two things, then. You know, that that's the so I have to be OK with that is right. what I'm getting. At. Right. I still have to say, and I'm still learning. You know, I, I'm still learning things and I still realize that I will not ever know everything. Now, do I at 30 years professionally in and I've been singing. For 43 years. Wow. So in front of people, my mm. first show was 43 years ago when I was 10 years old. Wow. I won the talent show in elementary school. At Sal Saluda River Elementary School, West Columbia, South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, with a three-man band, which included my brother, who's one year younger on bass, and my friend David Campbell, my same age, on guitar. We didn't have a chance. His big brother in high school, Chuck, said, you guys are going to be in the talent show. So I'm sorry. You don't have a choice. <laughs> well, that sounds cool. Do we get to be in a rock band? Yes. Okay. But we were pretty much told you're going to do <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Who wants to be the drummer? Who wants to be the drummer? Me. All right, you go with what's his name and learn a beat. All right, and who wants to play guitar? Well, David, we already know you're a guitar. Nick, you're the bass player. Sorry, strong <laughs> boat done, and uh, my brother became the bass player. Turned out to be really good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we didn't really have a choice, but you know, I even though I've been singing that long, I want to know everything, but I'm but I'm right. just not. Like yeah. I went to a vocal school. I graduated from University of South Carolina. Then I said, ah, I got this degree in psychology. I'm like, wait a minute. That, I don't want to give up on the music thing just yet. I'm going to move out to uh, L.A. Yeah. 
see if I can meet a few people and go to this vocal school. There's a brand new vocal school in its first year, and I and I want to be in that first class. Vocal VIT, Vocal Institute of Technology, related to MIT, the sure. or GIT. It's called it, but it, they call it MIT, but it's really related to GIT, okay. the Guitar Institute. Mm-hmm. It's still out there. People go, they think they're going to be stars right away. Well, like, you know the story, but and right, it's exactly. a lot, and, it, and it's a lot harder than it winds up looking. And you just have to really have perseverance. But right, so I went right. out there, and I got. They, they said, "Yeah, you can be in the first class." So. You know, we it was a six month course. Now it's like a year to a year and a half, and it's accredited, and it's all this major stuff. Oh wow! They, it's almost like a Berkeley, you know. Wow. But Berkeley, the four year college, in you know Massachusetts, you know, which is one of the well known musical colleges and stuff. Oh, yeah. um, so it's not it's not that, but you know, it has those. It's got better accreditations now. Mm. We went to the class. I uh, went to that course. Very good. It covered a lot of areas, theory, diction, dynamics, vocal um, technique, um, everything, breathing, the vocal platform, um, support, you name it. And it had you had private lessons throughout. So each week you had three private lessons with one or more instructors. Then you attend classes. So it was pretty intense, uh, uh, intensive training. But they had they to my point about the fact that you'll never know everything and that it's a lifelong process. Hmm. They said, well, maybe a month or so in, he goes, I just want to let you all know, you know, that book we have. And it's this thick, you know, it's like it's a good four, five, six inches, you know, the 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 VIT okay. book. Right. He goes, we're going to teach you this. We're going to go through the whole thing, y'all, in six months. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing and there's no question about that we're going to get through this book in six months which is that wasn't a huge feat right. you know you look at it, well, i can i can i can buy that yeah. however it's going to take you about six to seven years to internalize everything we're going to teach it to you in six months but it's going to be about seven years until you actually feel right. like you've mastered this stuff Right. And, you know, you should have heard the boos and the chorus of boos in the class. <laughs> Boo! We want to be rock stars now. Right. Well, doesn't happen that way. Right. So I heard that, and I was pretty taken aback by that. And I went, well, all right. So it's one of those things, eh? Then you have to answer those questions and see if you want to do, you know, be dedicated and persevere in the vocal lifestyle. So that right. was the first time that I heard that, and I had to be honest with myself and look inside and say, all right, it's one of those things. That's the way it is, huh? Okay, I'm willing to take take the long road. You know, yeah. I'm willing to do the obvious only path, which is the long path. All right. Yeah. And the funny thing was, I graduated from there in '89, and about seven years later, about to the month. I actually looked at my watch and said, you know what? I think I got it. I yeah. feel comfortable. And it was. It was seven years later. They were exactly right. Wow. I felt like I internalized and got everything in the book just about right at seven years later. So it ain't no lie. They were right. Yeah. But I stuck out long enough to go, you know what? I'm glad I stuck it out because I really feel like I, I have it. It takes that long to come to be comfortable and, you know, to feel like. And that was only what I call step one of the law of the long process of learning. Because mm-hmm. what year is that? What's 89 plus seven? Indeed. That was into the sabotage years. Right. That was like 96. 96. Right. So about yeah. the time Dead Winter Dead came out, I yeah. started. Yep. Going, hey, because I wasn't comfortable at all. Edge of Thorns. I mean, it was all right. You know, handful of rain, okay, but I still had all kind of problems I was battling through with, you know, just not having vocal issues on the tours and stuff and Mm. just so many things that I had to really master. So it was about around Dead Winter Dead or maybe going into Wake Up With Joe when actually I could look down and say, man, all right, I feel more comfortable now. So they they didn't lie. (laughs) It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And look where you are now. 
Right. You just got to, it's perseverance, <laughs> put in the years, stick it out. And I still don't feel comfortable with a hundred percent of the stuff vocally. Now that I'm, you know, you start aging. Right. Yeah. I'm not at a bad, I mean, they say the vocal instrument, the vo, you know, your vocal instrument continues to basically get better and better. And to you're about 67. Oh, wow. So, I'm not even close no, to any to go. that. <laughs> so I realized that there's still, you know, things that I can, you know, technique wise, you know, just technique things. It's all down to technique now yeah. to, make it, to make life easier. You just try to make life as easy as you can as a vocalist. It, it's difficult. It's a hard life. Let's yeah. face it. You know, everybody else, you know, drum, they don't worry about if they have a sore throat getting up there and playing the drums. Yeah. Guitar players, you can even have the flu or something like that. Um, but not as a vocal. You get something like that. That's why we're all out there on that winter tour, TSO, and all the singers are like, <laughs> right. If anybody even goes <laughs> like a hundred feet away, we're like, cough radar. Yeah. I think I heard a cough in sector three, two point six miles away. Send helicopters. <laughs> send the police. Take out the target. No. <laughs> quarantine everybody. <laughs> yeah, quarantine, quarantine, sector seven. Close off that area of New York City. No. But um just don't go to Japan. I know Wuhan. No, no, Wuhan. You're talking about China. No. Oh yeah, is it China or Japan? I don't know. I, I no, can't it was really China up. with the with the coronavirus. That's right. Oh, yes, now yeah, it's China. now yeah. we're actually section off the entire country of China. Right. That's the kind of thing that that, that like I said, you need a luck. We need lots of luck. And yeah. TSO every winter tour because that's the flu season, right? right. And we yeah, decide yeah. that's the time that they have to, that's when we gear up. So there's a lot going against you, and you have to be smart out there, have great hygiene, watch those hands all the time, and just, you know, gosh, hope for some luck because yeah. we do signing lines every night. Somebody could come through that line. What if it's, what if it was the coronavirus? Right. Yeah. We, Oh, if they have, then you've got a whole band. You know what I mean? It could be a disaster. Right. So we really have, have to have. <laughs> that's right. Really, it could be the band end band. of. It could. I mean, no more TSO, no more sabotage. Everything's done. <laughs> yeah. you, but seriously, on the road, that could potentially be something that could, you know what I mean? What if everybody got, you know, so we have to have lots of luck and, and, and be in practice, you know, the, you know, top notch, you know, the hygiene and everything like that, you know, just gosh, and just hope that nothing kind of comes your way. It's a, Man. that's probably the biggest mental game uh, that we, you know, face in, um, you know, in TSO is, is that time that the winter, the fact that it is the flu season and the fact that we need to, especially the singers have you, there's no question about it. you have to remain healthy. You, right. you know, there is no, there is no question. Right. Do you get sick? No. If you do, you hope that it's something, um, you know, not, not that's not going to take you out. But hey, it happens. Right. Yeah. But we just we need a lot of luck. So uh, I hope everybody what, wishes us tons of good luck over those. When <laughs> what if somebody does get sick in TSO? I mean, is there somebody else that'll take over for somebody? Or yeah, yeah, we all have Everybody's backup prepared, roles. Right? Yeah. yeah, every singer has two or three backup songs that they're responsible for in case. But you don't want to do that. We rarely ever have to even engage that backup process. But yeah. Um, gosh, has it ever happened to you where you've gotten sick? I, every night just TSO, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we have contingency, yeah, the contingency backup plan in place for everything, hmm. but you know, you never want to really go there. So, we've had great luck. Uh, we need great luck. If anybody knows any luck uh, manufacturing <laughs> facilities, luck processing facility. If you can manufacture luck at home, maybe on the stovetop or the microwave, wherever you have to do it, please send us all the manufactured luck you can. We need it. <laughs> you can just uh, go to luck.com. That's probably ah, easy. Hey, I think I'll do that now. <laughs> Actually, Sean Peck was uh, going on tour with his uh, three tremors the other day, and uh, he, he, took, oh. posted a, yeah, he posted a picture of himself. He was wearing a mask on the airplane because he doesn't want to catch anything. Hey. Blame him, though. That's that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, We're going to Greece. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's is that where Arch and Angel is from? Greece mostly. No, no, no. no it's, it's it's Italian guys. Oh, that's right, Italian. Um, right. Yep. The label 
Frontiers Records in Italy, in Naples, they really are responsible for kind of like just saying, hey, you and Aldo Lonobile, the producer and guitar player, you guys get together and put together a band and put an album together. You know, they yeah. brought us together. Perfect. So it's more of a label initiated band. Right. Which is interesting. Mm-hmm. I'd never really done it that way before, but it's sometimes good. You never know where a good idea is going to come from. I don't right. shoot them down. Right. You know, if a good idea comes from somewhere, we see. But I had already worked with Aldo. Like, he was producing. Yeah, Timo. all thanks to uh, Timo Talki. That's right. I, I work and, with and him every week. I'm like, I have a podcast with him every week. Really awesome. Yeah, he's. Um, I have to tell him you're on my show now. Yeah, tell him thanks, too. Um, if you see him, tell him I said thanks again and uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, I've How's... gotten to sing two songs on both of them. Yeah. This time on Return to Eden, Aldo was producing. Right. So um, that's how we really met. And and then Frontier Seat, you know, they kind of saw how we worked together. And he was talking to them, you know, they live in the close, I mean, close in the same area of, of, of Italy. So he was just like, man, it's so easy to work with him, you know, just shoot him a song. He's got the vocals done quick. Uh, we, he, you know, do, you know, puts the right stuff in. So he, I think he put in a good word and just told him that we had a good working relationship. So it all built from there. It's crazy bands these days. I've never been in a band where I met all the guys the day before the first two shows we played. Oh, wow. We rehearsed in Miami, then got on the ship, 70,000 tons of metal and played the first show that was on the main stage of the entire cruise. Wow! You could hear the engines cranking up. The props started returning. The initial one it rumbles the whole ship before yeah. it gets going. It's just right. kind of pulling out of the spot. I'm like, is that low end rumble? We were doing sound check at the same time. And no. And then I went, oh, no, that's the dang. That's the propellers. <laughs> I'm surprised you feel on a big ship like that. Yeah, you do. It was quite the rumble. It was like a little mini earthquake. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot of good low end in the system. Oh, that's not the low end. That's just <laughs> that's just the, the props. But so it went good. Um, it was a lot of fun. But I've never seen been in a situation like that where I'm practically meeting the guys in person for the first time right. in the rehearsal studio. Um, and. Then you go play a show the next day. So, hey, we're a new band. We're taking it one step at a time. We're a baby. We know that. Um, it, we're going to go. Th- oh, no. What happened? Disappeared. Sorry about that. There you go. All right. I was, I was like, what happened? Twitter, oh. So I have, I got to call Rich Catino, but. <laughs> Tell him he's got to wait. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But, um, <laughs> but no, that's basically, you know, what we're doing. We're just starting and just taking it one day at a time. and. Like every new band, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's cool. I, I when I got the email saying that you were ready for interviews, and then I didn't realize you were in that new band because I've seen the advertisements for the the new album, but I didn't realize you were in it. And then I said, "Oh, that's pretty cool." So I've been listening to it, and it's I really like it a lot. I like some of the things like you do, like on the second song. I can't think of the name of it because it's on my phone. Uh, you do like that breath thing, uh, that like <sighs> kind of thing. And it's yeah, just things like that it reminds me like sabotage stuff, and it's, that's that's pretty cool because not a lot of bands yeah. do what little things effect. like that. Yeah, it's vocal sound effects. See, I'm right. getting into vocal sound effects. I want to have my own sound effects, just like every other instrument. Everybody gets to do effects, and I'm gonna do it too. I don't care. That's what I did. I did it in like two or three places with different stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's cool. I like when you know little things happen like that because not a lot of bands do things like that. So that, that's that's awesome. Um, okay. What do you? What do you? Uh, what's your favorite song off of this new album? Do you have one? Oh, favorite song. I'm probably going to say um, Who's in the Mirror. Okay. I, I like Who's in the Mirror. Why is that? Uh, it's just different. You know, it's it's got, uh, you know, soft stuff, hard mm-hmm. stuff. It's a little bit of everything. You know, I yeah. think that. Tell this guy to stop calling. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> this guy's in the persistent, isn't he? Well, oh, that's brave words right there. So they're oh. gonna be they're gonna be hammering me down because they're supposed to run like 30 minutes. So 
Uh, They've got me stacked up right now. Uh, but um, gotcha. all right. Well, if if you have any other time, we could do this. You know, we can add on to another show because there's plenty of things I could talk about with you. That's right. Mm-hmm. We should do that. It, this they've stacked them right now, but after I get done with the today and tomorrow, then I have some breathing room. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm on Facebook, or you mm-hmm. want to type, rate me on here or email, or whatever, and then we can. Uh... Yeah, I will, because I know that. I mean, geez, it's just not enough to go. You know, thirty minutes just ain't enough these days. But... Yeah, yeah. Usually, I do an hour. And I, and I appreciate the support too, because yeah. uh, we're we need everything we can get. We're just you know taking it one day at a time, and that's all we do. Yeah, exactly. Um, All right, so you got to go do your other interviews and stuff, but we will be back with Zach Stevens with part two. That's right. That's right, part two, and I'll be in touch, and uh, we'll get it done because I know it's just like not enough time these days for anything. They stack these interviews back to back, and if you go the normal time, you're almost too late. So I get it. I even came in a little early. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know. Um, you get some aggressive people sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Like I talked to Canada, they were like, "We are not going to apologize for going over." You tell them it's Canada talking. I'm like, "Oh, I'm hearing it like." <laughs> well, I'm uh, very easy to work with. I'm not like that. Thanks so much, Wayne. I All appreciate right. it. Man. Well, we will talk to you next. Uh, well, whenever we can, but it'll be on the next uh, episode. And uh, thank you very much again for coming on. And we will you talk more it. about Arch and Angel. All right. You got it. All right, well, Lots talk. to talk about. I appreciate it, Wayne. Talk to you later. All right. Okay. Goodbye. All right. So that was it. Uh, my interview with Zach Stevens. So hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe to YouTube or wherever you're listening to this on iTunes or Spotify, Stitcher. Um, you can also go to our website, ratsalreview.com. You can also find us on Facebook uh, under uh, facebook.com slash ratsalreview. Twitter at rat underscore review and instagram at rat underscore review no rat underscore salad review something like that figure it out just search rat salad review and we will pop up search us on google everywhere we're in all different kind of podcasts so wherever you listen to us we're podbean itunes stitcher spotify whatever podcasting you listen to podcast on we're probably on there so just search for the show and you will find us most likely if you can't let us know and we will try to get on there But uh, that's it for now, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks for listening, watching. Oh, please buy a t-shirt. Some new ones coming out soon, or at least one new one. And it's going to be pretty cool. All right. See you guys next week. Bye. What?